Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Summer is in full swing here. I hope all of you are enjoying the nice weather. Today we will decode three martial proverbs. I will explain one important proverb for each internal style in detail. More importantly, I will explain how to categorize and correctly analyze a martial proverb by considering its context. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's Dao De Jing sentence is Wei Dao Shi Cong from the 21st chapter. In this chapter, Lao Zi introduced the term De O virtue for the first time in his book. Also, some popular terms and concepts used in Chinese daily life are rooted in this chapter. So, it is a very important chapter to understand the nature of a Tao in the universe. The first two sentences, Kong De Zhi Rong, Wei Dao Shi Cong, contains the word De or virtue. One of the two key words of the title of the book, Dao De Jing. First, let's translate these two sentences word by word. Kong means great, De means virtue, Zhi means of, Rong means state, Form, Wei means only, Dao means Dao, Shi means that, Cong follow or according to. Put together, it means the appearance of a virtue in its fullest experience is no more than the result of a compliance with the Tao. End translation. In other words, Lao Zi described the relationship between Tao and the virtue as the capacity of great virtues is obtained only by following Tao. So, the term De or virtue, a key concept in Chinese philosophy, according to Lao Zi, is rooted in Tao. De or virtue is the manifestation of a Tao. Then, Lao Zi continued describing the nature of a Tao by using 13 sentences. Many famous Taoist terms actually come from these 13 sentences. Lao Zi said, quote, Dao Zhi Wei Wu, Wei Huang Wei Hu, Hu Xi Huang Xi Qi Rong Yong Xiang, Huang Xi Hu Qi Qi Rong Yong Wu, Yao Xi Ming Xi Qi Rong Yong Jing, Qi Jing Shen Zhen Qi Rong Yong Xin, Zi Jin Ji Gu, Qi Ming Bu Qi, Yu Yue Zhong Fu, end quote. Translation Inscrutable, intangible, and yet containing forms. Intangible, ins inscrutable, and yet containing things. Profound and obscure, but having an essence, a veritable essence in which is a consistency. From eternity until now, its nature has remained unchanged. It inherits all things from its beginnings. End translation. So, according to Lao Zi, Tao is intangible, inscrutable, and profound, but contains essence. Then, at the end of this chapter, Lao Zi pointed out that the origin of everything in the universe is Tao. In Xiu Dao, this chapter has been used for thousands of years to guide energy refinement process, especially to explain the nature of energy. For example, the first two sentences, Kong De Zhi Rong, Wei Dao Shi Chong, normally interpreted as the state of a mystery gate is the path to achieve the great Tao or elixir. In Tao's practice, Practitioners follow the concept of uh, Wu Zhong Sheng Yu, or non existence, generous existence. In other words, in Xiu Dao, 
The dynamic energy rises from the static state of the emptiness. Following Lao Tzu's detailed description of Tao or energy in Xiu Dao, the method to manage energy according to different energetic experiences has been explained here. For example, when the energy is not strong, one should cultivate it. When the energy becomes strong, one should refine it with the right level of fire or mind. An important moment in Xiu Dao is Yang Sheng or Yang Energy Rising moment, a moment that practitioners should pay attention to in order to not miss the chance of a refinement, which has been described in this chapter. So, this chapter, especially the 13 sentences, is very important to understand how to manage the rising energy in Xiu Dao. With that, let's now decode three important martial proverbs. Topics covered in today's video include First, key issue in explaining Chinese martial art proverbs. Second, how to avoid misunderstanding a proverb. Topic 3, Proverb 1, Xie Zhong Yu Zheng. Topic 4, Proverb 2, He Shi Bu Xian Xiao, Kai Shi Bu Xian Da. Topic 5, Proverb 3, Yi Ru Piao Qi. And Topic 6, Take Aways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1, A Key Issue in Explaining Chinese Martial Art Proverbs. Today's video is the 15th video of the Martial Proverb series. In previous videos, I have covered a lot of proverbs and related topics already, including explaining the importance of martial art proverbs. However, I have yet to talk about some key issues in explaining Chinese martial art proverbs. So, let's first work on the topic today before we look at today's proverbs. It is an important topic and I hope this methodology will help the community understand the proverbs written in the Chinese language better, no matter what language they will be translated to. Of course, there are many issues in explaining martial proverbs and there are many reasons causing those issues. For example, linguistic limitations and the training experience of the interpreters, and so on. However, out of a multitude of issues, there is one key issue that deserves our utmost attention, and understanding this issue will help us see many martial proverbs in a new light and take your practice even further. This issue we will talk about today is context. Some people in the community do not understand the context of many proverbs. In other words, they do not understand when and how to apply them in practice. Let me explain. Basically, there are three main approaches to creating a proverb. The first approach is to emphasize a general principle. The second approach, which is the more important one, is to correct or prevent a mistake in practice. And the third approach describes an ideal result, often using exaggerations. I will elaborate on them one by one. Now, let's look at the first approach the one that is used to emphasize or express a general principle or practice. There are many proverbs that fit into this category. For example, the first two proverbs introduced in the 14th episode of this series, Gu Zheng Jin Rou, or In Order to Release Martial Power Smoothly Without Blockage, 
the body structure should be solid and correct, and qi xue yi liu, or the tendons and the muscles should be strong and flexible. And the second proverb in the thirteenth episode, nei wu xing yao dong, wai wu xing yao sui, or the internal five element should act, and the external five element should follow. Links to both episodes are in the description. So, these two examples are int introduced previously reflects the approach of introducing a general principle. Of course, there are some specific practices in order to achieve and follow those principles. The nature of proverbs in this category is to introduce a general principle. Now, let's talk about the second approach, an approach used to correct or prevent a mistake in practice, especially in teaching. Most Chinese martial art proverbs fall into this category. Let me explain. In the Chinese martial art community, especially in teaching, when a teacher notices a student repeatedly making the same mistake, very often the teacher will find a well-established proverb to correct the student's mistake. Since those proverbs linguistically are very easy to memorize and they make sense in preventing specific mistakes, both the teacher and the students are very happy to use this method in teaching. Some teachers can even create proverbs on the spot when identifying a student's specific mistake in order to help the students in a more efficient way. That's how knowledge has been transmitted traditionally. When I was a child, my grandfather and other teachers always used this method and that's why I remember so many proverbs. Likewise, I use this method very often when teaching my Chinese students since it is so easy for them to remember and apply it in practice. When teaching non-Chinese students, I sometimes choose a short and precise proverb and provide a simple translation since non-Chinese speakers do not enjoy the linguistic benefit carried by the proverb in Chinese. So, the best way is to explain the meaning to the students without quoting the original proverb. Before we look at the third approach, let me address an important point. A proverb used to correct a common but specific mistake should not be treated the same as a proverb used to emphasize a general principle. In other words, do not confuse the first approach with the second approach. Let me elaborate on it further with some examples. Example 1. When you heard the proverb Tou Shang Ding, Tou means head, Shang means upward, Ding means push or against. Put together, this proverb is translated as the head pushes upward. It does not mean your head has to push upward to its extreme physical limits. Doing so will make your neck become stiff. This proverb is used to remind you that you should slightly extend your head upward in a natural way, instead of softening or slouching the neck, which would make the energy become sluggish. So, when a teacher sees a student who does not have upward energy in the upper body, he will use this proverb to remind and correct the student's common mistake. It does not mean that you have to extend your head to the sky or you have to push something upward with your head. That is both impossible and 
unnecessary. Example two, when you hear the proverb "Chui jian zhui rou" or "Sing the shoulder and drop the elbow," it is just used to correct the students when a student's shoulder rises upward too much and the elbow pushes the shoulder upward like this, or to remind the students to relax the shoulder and elbow so that the upper body does not have an unwanted rising energy in some movements or postures. It does not mean that your elbow has to stick to the ribcage and your shoulder has to force to move like this, which is only make your posture become stiff, which is a fundamental violation of the principle of a martial art practice. Furthermore, some people claim that Xing Yi's original posture is to imitate the practice of the soldier holding a heavy spear or whatever. So, their elbow has to stick to the ribcage. That is just a very strange claim. Don't you think holding a spear so heavy that your elbow had to stick to your ribcage was a very dangerous posture on the ancient battlefield? A spear should be held easily without a heavy feeling, or else it would be just suicidal on the battlefield. Right now, people can say whatever they want, but in reality, ancient soldiers would not practice like this. Read any ancient spear training manuals, such as Shou Bi Lu. You will clearly understand this basic principle. Following a natural way of practice, in other words, a Tao's way of practice is very important. Any practice going to an unnatural extreme as its fundamental practice violates the Taoist principle. I have to say that many people in the community can easily make mistakes when understanding proverbs in the second category, since proverbs in this category need to be applied to specific situations to correct specific mistakes. It is just wrong to interpret the second category as general principles. Again, general principles are the ones in the first category, or you will find many examples that cannot be explained by this category of proverbs. Remember, the Tao's practice emphasizes the concept of natural and neutral, or zi ran and zhong he. Any practice that violates these two key principles is incorrect. Understanding and interpreting proverbs in this category in a dynamic way is important too, which I will explain in the next topic. Now, let's talk about the third category of martial proverbs. This category uses an expression to describe an ideal result, very often in an exaggerated way. Let me explain it with some examples. For example, when talking about speed in practice, here is a very popular proverb, Yan si liu xing, shou si dian. Yan means eyes or vision, si means looks like. Liu Xing means falling star or meteor. Shou means hand or fist. Dian means lightning. Put together, it means that in practice, vision is as fast as the meteor and the hand is as fast as the lightning. A beautiful expression about a martial art speed, but think about it. Can you really move your eyes as fast as the meteor? Can your hand really move as fast as a lightning? If your vision and your hand are not as fast as a meter or lightning, does it mean your movement is slow? So, 
This proverb is just an exaggerated expression and should not be interpreted literally. Let me give you another example. A popular proverb says, Quan da qian bian, shen fa zi xian, expressing the importance of a diligent practice. Quan means fist, representing martial art training. Da means practice, perform. Qian means one thousand. Bian means times. Shen fa means body method, which means advanced practice such as body method is important. Zi means automatically. Xian means display, show up. Put together, the literal translation is after practicing a movement or routine for a thousand times, the body method will automatically manifest. Actually, this proverb means the advanced practice will be achieved after you practice a technique many times. So, even though the word qian or a thousand is used here. It does not mean you have to practice something for exactly 1,000 times, no more, no less. It is just an expression, it does not literally mean a thousand at all. So, proverbs in this category are much easier to identify and normally people do not make too many mistakes in understanding their real meaning. You can see that exaggeration is a very common approach used to create these proverbs, helping to emphasize the result of following certain principles. The comparisons in these proverbs are often not meant to be taken literally. To summarize, there are the three methods to categorize martial art proverbs. Again, the most confusing of these is the second category. The second category requires a specific method for a sufficient explanation. By the way, about three months ago, I began sharing my understanding and thoughts about martial art and Xiu Dao practice in a proverb format in the community section of this YouTube channel. I have been posting one proverb or short text each day in the community section. Normally, I do not respond to questions or comments in that section, but I do keep an eye on them so that I will answer the common questions when I notice it. The original idea is to keep those ideas private, but I chose a public place such as YouTube. If you are interested, please have a look. Now that you are aware of the possible misunderstandings that occur in the second category of Proverbs, how can you avoid such misunderstandings? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. How to avoid misunderstanding a proverb. It is much easier to avoid misunderstanding a martial art proverb after understanding the three categories of proverbs. Our objective here is to better understand the real meaning of a proverb and at the same time avoid any unnecessary misunderstanding. I would now like to share my experience with the community in analyzing a proverb correctly. First, you have to know the origin of the proverb. Very often, many hear it from your teacher or your friend or on the internet. However, the best way is to find the earliest source in a written format. For example, if a proverb has 500 years worth of history in an old document, you have to find its original source. So, having a good collection of training documents is essential. Furthermore, if a proverb's meaning has changed in history, it's important to find the origin and keep track of each change in different documents. So, do not rely only on verbal or oral transmission in research. 
unless the proverb exists only in an oral format. Most likely, an old martial proverb has a written source and does not exist only verbally. The reason for this work is to find out the original context of the proverb as well as the change in context over time in order to fully understand it. A proverb does not exist in a vacuum. Considering a proverb in isolation and ignoring its comprehensive context often does not mean much and very often causes mistakes and misperceptions. Second, after you identify the source, you can put that proverb into one of the three categories and interpret it accordingly. Again, if it is a proverb that belongs to the second category, it may take more effort to better understand it since you have to know the original objective of that proverb, or else you will definitely misunderstand it. Third, test the theory with the movement or stance to verify whether the proverb can be used to explain all possible situations. If the theory does not apply to all situations, the proverb most likely belongs to the second category, and hence requests more research in order to fully understand it. The word research should not be used lightly. You have to be serious and meticulous in your research, or else it is not research. Speculation alone cannot be considered serious research. In my proverb-related videos, I have always tried to introduce the culture and the historical background of a proverb, along with its original source before explaining the proverb. That is a serious attitude. So, correctly and fully understanding a martial art proverb requires serious work, including research, testing, and verification. A martial artist should keep a clear mind in the process of scholarly work and avoid any bias and prejudice. If not, you should do something else. With that, let me now introduce three proverbs. Topic 3, Proverb number 1. Xie Zhong Yu Zheng. This is a popular Tai Chi proverb. It means straightness in leaning motion. I have a video that introduces this proverb in general martial art practice, but today I will explain this term in the context of a Tai Chi practice. The first document in history to mention this term was Chen Xin's Chen Shi Tai Ji Quan Tu Shuo or Administration of Chen Style Tai Chi. In this book, Chen Xin said, quote, Shen Sui Yu Shi Wai Xie, er Xie Wai Xie Zhi Zhong, Zi Yu Zhong Zheng, Bu Ke Ju Ni. End quote. Translation The body sometimes leans. However, the straightness and centralization is contained in the leaning posture. A practitioner should not be limited by the term straightness. End translation. This proverb describes a general principle in practice and hence belongs to the first category of martial proverbs. In Tai Chi practice, we all know that the body should be straight. However, there are many instances in which the body leans forward or sideways. Sometimes people think that is a mistake. Actually, that is not the case at all. Some posture, for example, many transitional movements actually requires the body to lean slightly to make it easier for the body to generate strong martial power. In other words, straightness is the overall body structure, but very often it's at the end of the movement. 
Martial power generation is objective and you have to lean the body during the transition if necessary. So, leaning is not a mistake if managed correctly. Check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 50 Straightness in Leaning Motion. Link it in the description. Topic 4 Proverb number 2. 何事不嫌小,开事不嫌大 This used to be a popular Xingyi proverb in the old days in Tianjin, but nowadays it is not that popular since most people do not focus on it when talking about the body method. Let me translate it word by word first. 和 means closing, 是 means posture, 不 means not. 贤 means concern, 小 means small, 开 means opening, 大 means big. Put together, literally, it means in martial practice, when there is the closing movement, the structure can be very small, while in the opening movement, the structure can be very big. At face value, it may seem as if the proverb talks about the physical body structure. However, if we also consider its context, the meaning will change. So, where does that Xingyi proverb come from? Actually, it originated in the Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu or Chang Family Martial Training Manual written by Chang Nai Zhou in the Qing Dynasty. I have many videos mentioning Chang Nai Zhou and his works, along with a detailed introduction. So, what is the original meaning of this proverb? Let's look at the original text. The original text is called 何事不嫌其小,欲气何得足也,开事不嫌其大,欲力发得出也,非徒长身为大,屈身为小。End code. Translation When there is a closing movement, one should not be concerned that the body becomes small, but the energy should be fully closed. While in the opening movement, one should not be concerned that the body becomes big, but the power should be able to stand out. A body becoming big does not mean a standing posture. A body becomes small does not mean a bending posture. End translation. So, Chang Nai Zhou used the word big and small to express two opposite martial power state, expanding motion for striking power and contracting motion for closing power. This proverb talks about martial energy not merely the extending and the bending body posture. This proverb belongs to the second category, which is used to prevent the misunderstanding of the two different martial power motions instead of merely referring to physical movements. If you read the shortened version, you will most likely misunderstand it. So, being able to find the original source and interpreting it by considering this context is very important. Topic 5, Proverb 3, Yi Ru Piao Qi. This is the not so popular Bagua proverb. Let me translate it word by word first. Yi means mind, Ru means is like, Piao means Floating, qi means flag. Literally speaking, it means the mind is like a floating flag. Now, the question is, is the translation correct? Not at all. Let me explain. First of all, where did this proverb come from? This proverb was first mentioned in Jiang Rong Qiao's Bagua book a very popular small book introducing Jiang Rong Qiao's Bagua practice, a simplified form of Zhang Zhao Dong's Xingyi Bagua Palm. This book was very popular back then, so what is the real meaning of that proverb? Well, Piao Qi or floating flag 
means the military command system in the ancient time in which the soldiers followed the signals indicated by different flag patterns. In ancient times, the military used different patterns as treated by different flag movements, indicating the command meant to be followed by the soldiers in a battle for better collaboration. That is the meaning of a floating flag. Now, putting together the first two words, the yi ru or mind alike, this proverb means that in Bagua practice, the mind acts as the floating flag to guide physical movement. In other words, physical movement should be guided by the mind instead of happening randomly. So, very often, it is a huge mistake to take a proverb at face value as its real meaning can be totally different. That proverb belongs to the third category, which is the method to express an ideal result in martial practice using an exaggerated expression. Again, cultural and contextual information is important while analyzing a martial proverb. Those were just three of the many martial proverbs. There's no limit to the discussion of martial proverbs, their contextual interpretation, and thus their real meaning in martial art practice. I will introduce many more interesting proverbs and their research in the future. Topic 6 Takeaways First, a key issue in explaining Chinese martial art proverb. Very often, people misinterpret a martial proverb without considering its cultural and historical context and instead only take it at face value. So, I created a three category model to classify martial proverbs in order to avoid such misunderstandings. Second, how to avoid misunderstanding a proverb? My solution is first to research its origin, then put it into the right category and then test it, verify it, and eventually you will find the real meaning. Proverb 1 Xie Zhong Yi Zheng Straightness in leaning motion, it belongs to the first category. Proverb 2 he shi bu xian xiao, kai shi bu xian da. Energy is the key factor in determining the concept of opening and closing. This proverb belongs to the second category, which is used to prevent the misunderstanding of the two different martial power motions instead of merely referring to physical movements. Proverb 3 Yi ru piao qi. The mind should guide the movement. This proverb belongs to the third category, which is the method to express an ideal result in martial practice using an exaggerated expression. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.